Welcome everybody to the Heart Coherence Collaborative. Today we are so excited. We have Sarah Landon joining us who channels the council and has a very similar mission as ours of raising uh, the frequency of indiv individuals and the planet. So thank mm -hmm. you for being here with us. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. I appreciate it. it it's uh, definitely my passion and I think my heart's calling that collective and individual elevation of our consciousness levels to a, a place of greater peace and joy and love and abundance that is available to everyone when we elevate our own consciousness and positively contribute to the raising of the collective consciousness. So I love these conversations. Yes. We do too. Yeah. <laughs> so I would love to hear just a little bit about your childhood and young adulthood what got you to the time of being a channel? Yes. Well, I will say I was always very spiritual. I loved nature. I loved animals. I always felt this connection to something bigger than ourselves or that unseen world. I was raised in a very Christian loving family. My family went to church. We, you know, we prayed, my grandparents, you know, had had photos of Jesus, you know, that was just their upbringing and what they passed along. I grew up in a very loving Christian community. At a young age, my aunt uh, had gotten into spirituality and metaphysics and reincarnation. And when I was about seven or eight years old, she started sharing these experiences that she had had and this wisdom that she was getting. And I instantly, even at a very young age, resonated extremely deeply with the concept of past lives, of spirit, of beings, of higher level beings that bring forth messages to us. She was involved with um, someone who was channeling at that point in time and following the wisdom of that channel. And it all seemed very normal to me. It seemed like truth. It felt like truth. It felt like love. Um, however, you can imagine some people in my Christian family did not embrace that, didn't understand it, had no awareness of things like that. So in the unknown, it seemed really scary and they were very vocally against it. And so I, I kind of felt what I, what was truth for me, but it was definitely a, a, an important and impactful part of my journey. Both parts of that being raised in a Christian family and loving God, and also having my eyes opened at a very young age to metaphysics. You know, one of the, the basic teachings was anything that you can imagine, you can create anything that you want to experience, you can create your experience and you do create your experience. And that resonated very deeply with me. Uh, fast forward, I got very involved in personal development as a teenager in, in high school and all throughout college. And that my twenties, I was very involved in personal development. I got on that path of, okay, you're supposed to <laughs> go to school and get a great job and buy a house and get the white picket fence and the two cars and all of that. And, and I was involved in the corporate world at, at a very young age and um, had a lot of fun in technology. Uh, in 2001, my brother died in a car accident. Very suddenly, it was really my first experience with someone close to me dying. And I was living in Seattle, Washington at the time, I ended up flying to Alaska where my brother was when he had his car accident. And I walked into the room with my family, <clears throat> his viewing where my brother was. So it was my, my family and I walking into this room and there's his body, you know, on the left side of the room. And I just remember it being, as anyone can imagine, extremely emotional and heavy and very traumatic feeling. And I had never touched or seen a dead body. You know, I reached down and touched him and he was very cold, which was shocking. You know, I, it really rattled my cage a bit. And I went and sat down in the room and you know, I could hear my family crying. I was, you know, definitely experiencing my own um, heavy emotions as well. I sat there a couple of minutes. I don't really know exactly how long, but without <laughs> any way of explaining it other than all of a sudden, I started to feel this warm, liquid love that started at the top of my head and just went through my entire body. And I was completely and totally in peace. Mm -hmm. I felt warm. I felt 
surrounded by this almost glow that was within me and around me. And I was completely and totally in peace. My brother's body was on the left side of the room. I was aware where I was, but I was no longer in the same state of consciousness that the rest of the people in the room were. I heard my brother over my right shoulder in my head say to me, I'm still here. I'm just not in there. And I knew that the reference was to his physical body. And I said back in my head, where are you? And he said, I'm just as here as I ever was. I just left the density of the body and I'm at a rate of frequency that you can't interpret with your physical senses. Vibration, frequency were not common words that I used or were familiar with at that time. They were very impactful. And I remember thinking how odd it was the way he was communicating where he was. So my very next question was, what about Jesus and hell and all of that? And he said, it's not like that at all. It is only love here. And I could feel it. I could really feel the pure love, the pure bliss, the pure peace and joy of his own being. And I, I felt surrounded in it. And it, it, it was absolute truth to me that there, he was in a place of pure love and I was feeling that. And so just as spontaneously as it came in, that energy receded and I was right back in the room and I was very aware of the emotional state that everyone else was in. But I can tell you from that moment, I never experienced grief again, like what I was feeling before that experience. So I think it was my love for my brother and my my desire to want to continue this, this communication and know he was there that allowed me to not only be open to it and keep my own channel open, but to seek that connection with higher guidance. And although I had been exposed to spirituality very young, I didn't want to be weird. I didn't want to be woo-woo. I was on this corporate path and I had this corporate career. And, and so over the years that followed, I would have very spontaneous experiences. I would walk into an elevator. I would feel that peace come over me. I knew my brother was there and I would hear always over my right shoulders, the way he communicated. I would hear someone or I would hear him say, ask, ask that guy his name. You know, I'm in an elevator going to my corporate job and here's this random person in the elevator and here's my brother, you know, ask that person his name. And in my head, I'm saying back, no, that's weird. I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm not <laughs> leaving. You know, I didn't say leave me alone, but I was like, why? You know, and, um, and uh, I would be like, okay. And I would ask that person, I'd say, oh, hi, my name is Sarah. And they would go, oh, hi, my name's Tim. And that was my brother's name. I would have experiences where I would walk into a restaurant and sit down and all of a sudden the waiter walking towards me would literally, I, it was like, oh, that's my brother. Like, and he, he, it would look like him. They would get to the, the person would get to the table and it clearly wasn't, but their name would be Tim. Mm -hmm. And so I just had these incredible experiences. I, I would bring through messages. This went on for many years. And then I really had a lot of questions like, what is our purpose? Why are we here? What is our highest potential? How do we really create our reality? I had all these questions. And although I was a avid reader of anything I could get my hands on, spirituality, personal development, I had read other channeled information. I had never, ever, ever, ever considered nor desired to be a channel myself. I was seeking answers to my questions and I really couldn't find them. You know, you have the yogi traditions that are like, go sit on the mountaintop and, you know, find inner peace. And, you know, you can't really be part of society if you're going to be on this realization or enlightenment path. You know, you have to remove yourself from the distractions, right? And then you have personal development saying, take massive determined action, you know, Get that thing that you want and a vision in your mind and focus on it all day long and you can manifest it through the law of attraction. And that wasn't answering all of my questions either because I did a lot of that. I would manifest the thing I thought I wanted. I would still feel the lack of fulfillment and purpose and meaning in my life, even though I had manifested all these things that were supposedly going to make me happy. So I was in my corporate career 
I am, um, I'm asking this question, what is our highest potential? What is our purpose? How do we live it? I knew I had done everything that I was supposed to do, quote unquote, you know, I dotted the I, crossed the T's from the outside. It looked like, you know, I had a very successful life and I'm, I'm very grateful for all of that. But inside I knew I wasn't living my purpose and I had no idea what that was. So fast forward a few years, I would wake up in the middle of the night and there would be this energy. It was not specifically my brother. It was this energy. And I would just get this guidance. Usually I felt this energy over my right shoulder and it would be, go get a pen and paper. And I would just write and write and write and write and write. And then I would be done. It'd just be done. The energy would stop and I would go back to sleep. When I woke up that morning, I would feel like I had had a good eight, 10 hours of sleep. I would read what had come through me. And it was the answers to the wisdom I was seeking but I knew it wasn't coming from my mind. I knew it was coming through me. So that went on again, very spontaneously for a couple of years. And then I ended up leaving my corporate path to actually pursue building a personal development company with some partners. And about as uh, <laughs> soon as I did that, the whole deal fell apart. And I found myself going, oh my goodness, you know, what, what is this all about? And what am I supposed to be, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? I have this purpose. What is it? What should I be doing? Right. And so I was in a yoga class one day and this woman had been there a couple of times. She was new and ended up kind of being by her every day. And one day I said, you know, how are you liking it? She's like, oh, I hate it. I'm never coming back. And she said, I just had to try it because everyone in my, in my business does yoga. And I'm like, what kind of business is that? And she said, I'm a QHHT practitioner, which I had never heard of. And she said, a quantum healing hypnosis technique, which was developed by Dolores Cannon. And again, I must have had that glazed over look on my eye. And she said, I help people get in touch with their higher self. And I'm like, let's book a session. <laughs> so a uh, long story short here, the council started coming through in those QHHT sessions. Mm -hmm. And it was an expansion of what I was feeling in the middle of the night and my experience with my brother, all of a sudden, this energy would come through, I would start the cadence of my voice would change, I would start to speak really fast. It sort of sounded like a Middle Eastern man, it was kind of a very masculine tone. And it would go on for 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half and answer all of her questions about everything. And they were all recorded. So I would listen to them. It was very peculiar to me because my voice was so different. I essentially said, no one is ever going to know about this except for her and I, right? Mm -hmm. No one is ever going to hear me channel. And mm -hmm. no one is ever <laughs> going to see me channel, right? So... I know that was over 10 years ago now, and um, it just unfolded. And um, I really could never have imagined where it is now. But um, I started living the wisdom that they were bringing through in these QHHT sessions, and it just started to completely change my life from the inside out. I was finding the purpose, the fulfillment, the meaning in life. I, I was so aware of this journey from awakening to realization to our highest potential, you know, they refer to people a lot as a master, which is the ultimate integrated part of you from uh, all of your incarnations that is the wisdom of all that you have become while still being here on earth in a awakened, realized state of um, mastery is what they really call it. And so, it was changing my life. I started to share it with a few close friends. I had a friend in particular that had read the Seth material. So I thought, okay, maybe that's safe. And it just started changing people's lives as I started to do sessions with people that were close to me that I trusted that I felt safe channeling for. And that expanded into doing six to eight private sessions a day um, with people all over the world, which led to starting to do large group courses and large group events to building our master's class program to publishing books with Hay House and speaking engagements and all sorts of things that I just never could have imagined. But as the council said from the very beginning, if you will live this wisdom, you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. And that has absolutely been my experience. And like I said, we try to put it in any 
particular resource that people are drawn to, whether it's books or YouTube videos or summits and interviews and challenges like this. Um, we go super deep in our courses that are particular focuses like living happily ever after or finding stillness. Um, there's lots of different courses that we cover that are channeled courses and courses that are focused on living the council's wisdom, like the 15 success principles of self-realization. And then for people who really want to interact with the council and me and ask questions in our master's class advance program, we talk about, and this is something that I feel is really unique to my passion with this is I absolutely love the council's wisdom, whether it's listening to their channel wisdom, the activation you receive in it, reading their wisdom. But to me, the most important part is how do you integrate it? How do you live it? How do you apply it? Because all the wisdom in the world, you know, it's all out there somewhere. If you're willing to look for it, you'll find it. It's not that the information, the wisdom isn't in the world. It's how do we really live it and integrate it in our own lives? And that's what we dive into, you know, really with our master's class program and some of our courses. So it's been an amazing journey. I know that's the long story, but that pretty much covers all of it. But it's just been an amazing, amazing adventure. And if you would have told me when I was in the corporate world, you're going to leave the corporate world and uh, start channeling a group of ascended master non-physical beings. You know? <laughs> so you have, absolutely have the wrong person. I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, I'm so glad it's unfolded the way it has. Oh, thank you for that. I want to take it back to the beginning because you said something that really reminded me of my childhood. And I, I went to spiritual school as a kid. And then uh, due to like a financial situation, my parents had to take me out of that. And we switched over to public school. And when I went to public school, they basically said everything you learned about at that school is crap. And kids would like pick on me. And they basically said that, um, you know, you believing in spirit is like believing in the Easter bunny or whatever. And, 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 it, and it shut me down and I became really confused. And then I like pretty much tried to do whatever I could to like drown everything out. And I, you know, pretty much got like bottlenecked to, on a 20 year journey of just numbing myself. Yeah. And then when I came out of that and somebody told me, you don't have to believe in anything specific. It's whatever you want to believe can be true to you. It like opened up everything and then spirit beings started coming to me. So the question I really want to ask you is like, are limiting beliefs the biggest block to channeling? I think the biggest block to channeling is trusting yourself. Mm. I have taught about 5,000 people around the world at this point how to channel. I have never come across anyone who can't. Um, everyone has their own unique way. Not everyone's going to be a verbal channel like I am. And there's people that I have taken through my course, The Art of Channeling, that have that communicate with animals in a way that um, is extraordinary and unique, or they do automatic writing, or they're more of a medium, or light language has become a big thing. Everybody's highest expression um, is, is unique. And you as the channel are part of what comes through, part of the expression that comes through you. A lot of it is probably based on your passion. And I have had a particular woman that went through um, the series that had been raised in a church where they spoke in tongues as a very young child. And then all of a sudden she starts spontaneously receiving light language and relates it back to what that felt like. But there was also a lot of judgment that went along with that. And so I think that we all are channels. My my next book that's coming out in July of 2024 with Hay House is called You Are a Channel. And it's because everyone is. Number one block to channeling or opening your connection to channel is trust. Because for most of it, us, it is right there all the time. It's far more subtle than you expect it to be. It's not like the, the, the clouds collide and lightning strikes and the angels and the trumpets all come down from heaven and anoint you as a channeler and take over your body. It's not, that's not my experience anyway. <laughs> so I don't know anyone who's ever had that experience of channeling, but maybe someone has and that's their experience. But to me, it's trust. Most people think they're making it up. Most people think it's coming from their head because it is right there. It's not outside of you. I don't experience the counsel outside of me. I, I focus myself into the place within me that they are and have always been. 
Mm. And that's my experience. So trust is number one. People think they're making it up. People think it's coming from their head. And so oftentimes when I take people through the series to learn how to channel in the art of channeling, we go through this process of receiving messages from your soul and writing them down. And I always encourage people, read it back to yourself. Have someone else read it to you. And it will say something like, you are loved, you are guided, you are supported, you're exactly where you're meant to be, everything is unfolding perfectly, you're divinely guided, all is in divine right time, you're exactly where you're meant to be, focus on love, really love yourself, do the things that it's like that. And they go, see, I must be making it up. <laughs> and I said, okay. Or they say it's coming from my head. And I'm like, I don't know about you, but here's what's going on in my head. You got to get this done. You got to get that done. You should have done that <laughs> different. You should have figured that out before now. You should have done this. You should have done that. You shouldn't do this. They shouldn't have done that. They should have done that. You know, that's what your head says, right? So people often don't trust it. The same thing we I have just gotten to teach some amazing, extraordinary channels. I'm not teaching them how to channel. I'm teaching them how to get themselves out of the way so that they can let the channel come through. But you'll they'll bring through this extraordinary channel. They'll never miss a beat. They never say, mm, um, take a breath, nothing. They bring through this incredible channel and then they go, I feel like I made it all up. And so trust, I think, is the the biggest barrier. The council has said from from day one, you know, your own self-worth and your own love of self are the key foundational uh, things to allowing everything. So if you don't think you're worthy, I'm not enough. I still have to do this. I have to have X amount of YouTube followers or X amount of email subscribers or X amount of fans or X amount of likes on my Facebook page or X amount of money and then I'll be enough. Or once I have the car and the house and the spouse and the everything perfect, then I'll be enough. And, and they get there and they're still not enough. There's something else they have to do to be enough. That is not allowing our worthiness. And the council says, there's nothing you could ever do here in this human experience that could ever make you more worthy than you already are and always have been. And there's nothing you could ever do in this human experience that could threaten that worthiness. It's understood that things that occur in our human experience occur like, you know, if, if we're looking at those things that are unwanted or things that people feel ashamed about or regretful about or guilty about, you know, those things have occurred when you are in a level of consciousness so far from the truth of who you are were or are when you're focused in an experience of separation and in total fear, lack, and limitation, it's understood from the highest levels that you're going to act in ways that are not aligned with your truth, but those things do not threaten your worthiness, your infinite worth. So it is about worthiness. We did an entire course on worthiness called You're Worth It because it's so important to know you are everything you wish to be. You already are. It's all within you. You're on this magnificent journey to becoming. And on that journey, the love, the adventures, the beauty, the magic, the miracles, the connections, the resources, all, everything you experience along the way, that's the beautiful part. You know, that's the best part. That continual expansion and greater expression and choosing the experiences you want to have is why we're here not to do something in order to be enough or be worthy. And self-love. The council talks about love yourself, love yourself, self-love, all these things. You know, religions talk about it. Books talk about it. And, and people will continually say, well, how do I love myself? And the council will say, well, that's your innate, inherent, true nature. Stop denying and doubting love for yourself. Most of us are habitually addicted <laughs> to denying love for ourselves. You know, if you sit in this moment and you tell the story of, oh, my teachers never thought I was smart enough, or my brother was always better at sports than me, or my parents loved my brother more or my sister more, or I, you know, everybody in my life always leaves me and breaks up with me. I'm just, you know, whatever it is, right? These stories you're telling you're actually denying love for yourself in the moment by telling a story of yourself that is unloving. 
And I, I'll tell you the biggest aha moment I had of this, and I, I got it, right? The wisdom's great. Apply it, live it, integrate it. But then you have these experiences. Once you become aware of these teachings, and you start to perceive the truth of them. You start to have experiences of them. And that is when they become really truth to you. So I was driving down the street. I, I, uh, I was raised with a father like you're on time because if you're not, that's disrespectful. And the same thing, you know, being in the corporate career, you have all these appointments, you show up on time, right? You'd be on time. And so I'm usually always on time. This particular day, I wasn't on time. And I was going to be about 15 minutes late to where I was going. And all these stories in my head, like, oh, you're not good enough and blah, blah, blah. And how could you do this? And you're not, you know, this isn't who you are and, and all this stuff. And I went, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm running 15 minutes late and I'm going to deny love for myself because I'm running a little late. Like, that's just silly. I ended up getting there and the people I were me I was meeting were also 15 minutes late. So I actually rocked right at the perfect time, right? But it's like, it's those sneaky little things. When you walk by a mirror, if you do anything other than look in your eyes and smile and go, you're amazing. You're beautiful. I love you, right? That's, that's what we want to start integrating and how we want to start living and applying this is, you know, catching that voice in your head because most of our thoughts, most of our limiting beliefs are just a habit. Mm. Mm. I would love to hear, you kind of touched on it, but there's so many different channels and, and people are channeling what seem to be different entities, or some of it's a very specific. It's like an alien. I would love, you touched on a little bit, but I'd love to hear you just clarify who the council is. And then when you help people to unblock themselves and learn to channel, are they channeling the same basic entity or is it all different things? Well, if you kind of go back to, there's one source. Council refers to it as the isness of all that is. You come from source, you will return to source. Source is what you are. You can use the word the divine, you can use the word God, you can use the word spirit, you can use whatever word you want, right? You came from source, you will return to source. Source is what you are. You came from God, you will return to God. God is what you are. You came from the was oneness, the isness, the all that is, and you will return to it. And everyone else is too, right? But we focus ourselves into this unique expression no different than a human. If you're part of a group, right? You're part of a group and you're like, oh yeah, I'm part of the such and such group. You know, a little kid, I'm, I'm a Girl Scout, right? So you're also still you, you're, you know, Sarah or Leah or Kyle or, and yet you're part of this particular group and you're also source and you came from source and you return to source. But part of it is what you're interested in. Part of it is what you resonate with. Um, you know, people that are part of gardening groups or uh, political groups or, you know, hobbies. We all identify as a unique aspect of ourself, who you know yourself to be, right? Then you focus yourself into these experiences like being a mother or being a spouse or being a teacher or being an accountant or being a lawyer. And you're involved in certain groups and you're still who you are and you still are source. You came from source and source is what you are, right? So I kind of like to clarify that. For me, the council is a group of ascended master beings. Um, they kind of explain the whole concept of ascension is the elevation of your consciousness, your vibration, that is an earth experience. So it is It is those beings who have focused themselves into the earth experience, have awakened, come into realization. And that is what they refer to as an ascended master being. So they are a collective of ascended master beings that have all been part of the earth experience, have gone through awakening to realization and are continuing to focus on humanity because of their great love for humanity, because of their great love for the planet, their great love for animals, their great love for nature. And they also say, you are us and we are you. You are the council here on earth. And they say that anyone listening at any point in time is also part of the council, that what you're really drawing to you, if you're listening to me channel the council, you are literally drawing this to you, you're remembering who you really are 
And you're essentially summoning to you in that moment, the part of you that is your ascended master self being. Now, there are a lot of people that have gone through uh, the art of channeling that say, I also channel the council. And I'm like, great. <laughs> They'll, they're never going to be the same through me as they are through you because you're bringing your expression, your personality, your experiences. They don't, um, you know, a lot of times I'll get guided to a particular word that isn't part of my vernacular, or my vocabulary that I don't frequently use. And I'll, I'll be guided to that word. And then I start to understand the meaning of that word. And then they'll start using that word. But I'm interpreting their streams of consciousness through my vocabulary, through my language, through my experiences. And so everyone, even if everyone was channeling the council, which is perfect from my perspective, um, you know, it, it to me, it's not a competitive thing in any way, or, uh, oh, I have some sort of, you know, ownership over the council, right? I don't. Um, they're available to all of us. They're within me. They're a part of me. Um, and I think everyone else does too. Now, there's other people that have experiences channeling beings that identify as aliens. I don't have that experience. Um, the council doesn't identify as um, as an alien being. That's not my experience. Um, some people have a very specific person that they channel, um, and that's fantastic too. There are definitely times when I feel like it's my higher self that I, I am bringing a message through, um, whether it's my own automatic writing or some of the awarenesses I have and how I experience channeling in my everyday life. There are times when I very specifically will get a message that I know it's my brother. I know it's my loved one that has transitioned. Um, we also talk about in, in our courses, how do you access your own higher self? How do you access your own loved ones on the other side? We all can do that. We can also access the higher self of anyone, even if they're currently in form or, you know, the consciousness of all sorts of different collectives. So it is about your focus. It is about giving this permission to come through. I've had times where, and I talk about it a ton in my book that's coming out, You Are a Channel, where I felt very um, connected, like I was being guided and Archangel Gabriel, for example, or Archangel Michael or St. Francis or St. Germain, right? And I would, or Jesus, and I'd feel a very strong presence, guidance. I know this is the being that's here and with me and guiding me and supporting me and loving me at this point in time. And sometimes I would feel that um, go back to collective energy and then I would feel more of a collective and it's all perfect. I think as humans, our mind sometimes wants to figure it out, which is amazing. Our human minds are amazing. Your mind wants to figure it out because it wants to do its job, which is appropriately categorize it, analyze it, associate it, you know, put it in the right place in the library of the mind. And that's not always available to us. And, you know, you said something very interesting about spirituality or God or spirit being uh, compared to the Easter bunny. Right. And again, that's so, it's so easy to explain it from my perspective, uh, living the council's wisdom, which is we are trained and we are interpreting what is, quote unquote, real through our physical senses. What you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch, what you smell. And the council also includes what you think as a, a sense by which you interpret reality. And so that's how your brain stores the information. What did I see? What did I hear? What did I taste? What did I touch? How do I associate what I tasted with what it looked like and what it smelled like to now know my brain smells a lemon and knows it's a lemon, right? Knows what it tastes like. So it's wonderful. That part's all wonderful, right? But ultimately we are frequency, vibration, light, feeling. We are feeling beings. So we never meant to completely disregard our ability to feel and feel ourselves into a higher vibration, a higher frequency, feel ourselves into energy, light, higher levels of consciousness. Um, and so if someone has never had an experience of that, they don't understand. I have a family member, a very beloved family member, that when I first started sharing my experience with my brother, couldn't really take it in. They They had no 
perspective. They had no experience of it. They had nowhere to put it. And yet they had heard me talk about it. And so um, that person lost someone in their life and someone very important to them. And that night that that person had passed, they were laying alone in their bed and explained almost verbatim that that person came to them. They were completely in peace and said, be in peace, all is well. And they literally came to me and said, I have never experienced sadness or grief since that person passed because this was my experience. I get it now. And so our jobs, we are not here to fix a broken world. We are not here to save the world. We're not even really here to change the world. We're here to live this wisdom. We're here to live in a state of pure love, our own experience in heaven on earth, our own magnificent journeys. We're here to be this consciousness, this love, this light that we are, no matter where we are and do what you love and do what you enjoy and do what brings you joy. You know, I bet you create these challenges and these platforms and these summits because it's what brings you joy. I do this because this is what brings me joy. There's also other things that bring me joy that I do, but it's what lights me up. It's what I love. I literally said when I was in the corporate world to my best friend, if I could just sit around all day and have amazing conversations about spirituality and consciousness and this incredible wisdom, like that's just a dream, right? And lo and behold, now that's what my day looks like. <laughs> so uh, I hope that was helpful. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I am curious about, because I went through QHHT school mm -hmm. and I graduated and I got to the point where I was supposed to start working with people and I was doing a practice session in my room and this overwhelming power came in the room that was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. And I freaked like out. <laughs> I was like, I'm done with this. <laughs> this is too much for me to handle. And so my question is, are there good and bad entities? It didn't feel bad. It just felt overwhelming. But at that time, I didn't have a community to talk to about this stuff. And right. I was just like, look, this is so far from anything anyone in my life is even talking about that I would, I feel like if I go down this road, I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, I, I completely understand. And I think that is um, a, a, an experience a lot of people have. I'll say now, I, I don't know what year was that for you. Do you remember? Oh. Four years ago. So yeah. I would say even in the last four years, there are so many more. I mean, think post-COVID, there are so many more places where people are talking about this. It's normal. It's approachable. It's consumable. Um, during COVID, we started creating communities in our master's class platform of people all over the world that meet almost every day sometimes that are talking about this stuff and their experiences. And as they share, someone else will be like, oh my gosh, I had that same experience and it's normal right? It really is. So when, so when I first started channeling the council, as I said, it was so strange. I talked so fast. The energy was so intense. I sounded like a Middle Eastern or a, yeah, a, uh, yeah, a Middle Eastern man, I guess is all I, I, it just, it had this very strong accent that wasn't my own. Now, when I channel the cadence in my voice is maybe a little bit different, but it's my voice. It sounds like me. It's right there. I just take a couple breaths and it comes in and I take a couple breaths and it comes out. When I first started channeling, I would, you know, the QHHT practitioner, who's one of my dear friends still, would walk me through this process, that 15 minute process. And by the end of it, you know, I'd be in channel, but I'd be laying down on a bed, take like 15 minutes. My eyes were closed. and the council would come in and then afterwards, you know, that was about it. Like that's all I could do all day. And then I got to the point where now it's a couple of deep breaths. The channel comes in. I could channel, you know, hours and hours and hours for days and days and days. And it's just a very normal, natural thing. So part of it is integrating the energy. The other thing people will say, for example, of, oh, I was going through life. And then all of a sudden I had this huge epiphany, this huge download, this huge uh, enlightening enlightenment experience or this huge high, like this energy came in and I was up here, right? And then they'll say, I just can't get there anymore. And I'm like, well, it's not that. It's actually that you have raised your vibrational set point such that when you were down here, like if you're, you know, level one to level 10, this is in the hierarchy, but just for, for, for your mind to get it. 
you were down at level like two, three, and then you, you jumped up to level 10 and then you went back to level five and then you gradually went up to level nine. So now you go from level nine to level 10 energetically or in the consciousness is not such a big deal, but you're like, where, where's that big epiphany, right? So you had an experience of maybe being in a certain energy level. And then all of a sudden you shoot up and you're, you're fully open channel and you're receiving all of your innate natural source energy that you've never experienced before, except for maybe the moment you were born. And it feels really, really big and overwhelming and outside of you. And it's really not. It's just you're, you haven't integrated or acclimated all of that energy and that consciousness and that vibration and that frequency. But as you continue on this path, you do. And so I believe if that energy came in at some point and you went, oops, too much, it went, no problem. Would you like to do this more gradually? You went, yep, please. And uh. you have integrated that and continued and will continue to integrate that over time. I, I always tell people, if it's too much, just ask them to slow down, ask them to, to, you know, lighten up a little. Others are like, bring it on, right? <laughs> now, my particular experience, and this is my particular experience. Like you said, it wasn't bad. It was just big. It was intense, right? I think about the very first time that I ever drove a car 100 miles an hour, I was completely freaked out. My friend's dad was kind of teaching me how to drive. You know, we were, we were on a trip and he's like, you know, this is the safe place if you want to experience going, you know. So I literally, I hit 100 and then I completely freaked and I like went back to like 50 miles an hour, right? But that was so freaky. Like, I remember thinking like, this is so fast, this is so scary, this is not right. I, I don't drive 100 miles an hour on a daily basis, but I would have no problem getting in a controlled experience of going 100 miles an hour now because it's different, right? I've been driving a lot longer. It's, you know, it's a different experience. And so I kind of relate it to that, right? I personally have absolutely never experienced anything other than love mm. from my guides, from spirit, from my higher self, from the council, from someone's loved one on the other side, from my own loved ones on the other side, from the consciousnesses that I've tuned into. And I don't know of anyone in my community that has experienced anything other than love either. I don't even think it's possible. So if, and I talk about this a lot in my book, You Are a Channel, if there are some, let's just call them dark forces out there. If you elevate, if you are in a state of consciousness and vibration and frequency of love and joy and peace and harmony and open to spirit and connecting to your higher self, and I just, the word innocence, if you are just in this pure place of spirit and connecting to spirit and focused on love, you are at a vibration and a frequency that anything that is not of love could not come anywhere near you. Hmm. If you focus yourself into a state of shame, Council said that's the heaviest, densest human emotion, shame. Mm. Not only did you screw up, but you screwed up so badly. You know, you are way over here, ostracized, embarrassed, humiliated, way over there, right? If you're holding yourself in that place, which it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to hold yourself in that place and deny love for yourself at that level, but you're also going to probably draw to you Right. You're not going to probably resonate with some really happy, positive, optimistic person that tells you life is good for you. Right. Life is meant to be good and anything's possible. Right. You're going to probably resonate with a different message at that point. Right. So to me, when you fill yourself up with all of you, which is the light and the love and the consciousness and the purity and the innocence and the joy and the peace and all, when you fill yourself up with all of you, Absolutely nothing that is not of love and light can be anywhere present in your experience. Mm, thank you. Um, can we, in the last part of the interview, speak with the council? Sure, absolutely. So I'll bring them in. It just takes me a couple of breaths. I'm just going to close my eyes. My eyes are usually closed when I channel. It just helps me to really focus. I encourage people, if it feels good to them, you know, close your eyes and just feel for the energy as well. Um it's an amazing experience. So um, I'll bring them in. They'll probably start with a little message and then you can ask any questions you have. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. 
We are so pleased and delighted to have the opportunity to speak with you on this fine and glorious day indeed. While our words to you are important, this is a vibrational experience of remembering the truth of who you really are, why you are here, and all that you intended when you chose this magnificent life experience, because we assure you, life is meant to be so very good for you. You are here to do the things that bring you joy. You are here on a grand adventure. You are here to contribute to your own expansion and the expansion of all consciousness. You are here on a journey of expansion. You are on a journey through levels of consciousness. That expansion does not make you more worthy, but that expansion provides data and information and wisdom that expand all of who you are and all that is possible here in the human experience and beyond. You are here to fully express all that you are, not to deny any part of you or your creativity. You are here to express yourself in any way that you choose for you. And yes, you agree to certain things that allow you to be part of the collective and have a quote unquote normal experience, but you are here to fully express all that you are. You are here to create your reality the way that you want it to be. And you are here to experience. You are here to choose the experiences that you want to have for you. Ask yourself, what experience would be fun? What do you want to experience? What would be fun to experience? That is why you're here. Expansion, expression, and experiences which all lead to the potentials and the possibilities. Everything is potential and possibility. And you are choosing and you are creating reality. What you focus on and the meaning you give it is what is creating your reality. Everything is pure potential. You are the one choosing whether you are worthy, deserving, whether you are free to create your life the way you want it to be. And so our ultimate foundation of wisdom that we bring forth to you is you are everything you wish to be. You already are. It is all within you. It always will be. Where would you like to begin? I would love to hear about the system of life and the afterlife of do we choose our lives? And if so, why would we choose a difficult or a life of suffering or abuse? Well, first off, you chose to come forth to earth at this time because it's the best thing going on anywhere. This is the time of the great awakening, the greatest elevation of consciousness that has ever occurred in any lifetime. And it is happening at an expedited rate. You are going to see your family, your friends, people you never imagined awaken to the truth of who they are, which is occurring because of the elevation of consciousness. So you came forth to first go through your own awakening and then to move into your own realization to elevate your own consciousness and positively contribute to the collective raising of consciousness. You didn't come here to write some terrible karmic wrong that you have done in the past. You didn't come here because you were forced to, to learn lessons. You came here as a sovereign, divine, empowered master being who chose to come forth and be on earth at this time to create your own experience of heaven on earth, to have your own grand adventure, knowing that all that you experienced would contribute to the potentials and the possibility for all of humankind to live in pure love, 
freedom, joy, peace, abundance, well-being, if it is each person's choosing. But as the consciousness is elevated, more and more will remember who they really are. Suffering is, uh, yes, you understood that not all moments would be easy. You understood that this was a journey through different levels of consciousness. The third dimension is the dimension of separation where there is fear and lack and limitation. The fourth dimension is transformation where you understand you can change your circumstances and your conditions. You can heal, you can process, you can transform things. But what you really came for is to realize yourself into the fifth dimension of pure love where your well-being and your abundance is assured, where what you want and need shows up even before you know you need it, where you live as a fully realized, enlightened, ascended master on earth that chooses to stay on earth in your own experience of heaven on earth, because that is the greatest thing that you can do to contribute to the great awakening of your beloved human family. Suffering is... And and is something that one can choose with their own free will. It is based on your level of consciousness, your awareness, your beliefs about yourself, your 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 thoughts. The thoughts that you are thinking affect your emotions. Your emotions affect the way that you feel. The way that you feel is determining what you are summoning with your consciousness into form. So Someone could have someone very close to them die and say, oh, this is terrible. My life is ruined. I can never be happy again. I am doomed to a life of suffering. Or one could say, wow, I was blessed with the presence of that person in my life. And look at all of the amazing gifts. Look at all the love I experienced. I am the most blessed person on earth. And now... My journey with this person continues on as they move into higher levels of consciousness. And we are still as connected as we ever were, maybe even more so now that they are eternally in a place of pure love. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So we have um, thousands of people that are about to be going into their heart space for the next 30 days where they're going to be really discovering uh, the power of their heart on a deep level, feeling appreciation, gratitude, bliss, joy every day. I was just wondering your take on the heart's role in our transformation on this planet. Well, it's all about integration, truly. Most humans are habitually, habitually trained to live in their thinking mind, to exist in their thinking mind, to focus themselves most all of the time on the thinking mind. And so when you begin to move your awareness from your head into your heart, one might describe it as feeling deeper into yourself, more intentional, more focused, going from your head into your heart, where you might feel more present, more aligned to your truth. That truth, the truth of you is joy and peace and love and harmony and well-being and abundance and freedom and beauty. That is the truth of you. So you're really focusing yourself into your true nature by going from uh, the, the busy mind into a more focused state aligned to being in the moment, being present. We say stillness is the access point to acceleration, manifestation, realization, transformation, all of these things. It is, uh, however, very important. We never uh, encourage you to start judging yourself because you find yourself in the mind. You may begin to move your awareness to being more connected to your heart, connecting into your heart, focusing on your heart space, integrating the mind, the heart, the body, the soul, the spirit, all that is, the isness of all that is. But if you find yourself in your mind, because you've got to pick up your child at a certain time and you've got to think about what you need to get done in order to be there by the time you need to pick up your child when they're released from school, don't judge yourself. 
Don't make the mind your enemy. We say realization is the integration of every part of you. It is not denying or judging any part of you. We are familiar with teachings that speak of the ego. We do not. When you're trying to get rid of the ego and get rid of that part of you, you are in judgment of some part of you. You are denying some part of you. We speak of the integration of every part of you into a state of realization, which is pure love. So most of you, you have a, if, you're, if your mind is a muscle, you have a very, very strong mind because that's where you're focused. That's, that's the part of your body you've been, quote unquote, working like a muscle in the body. If you're always working your arms when you're working out, your arms might be very strong. You might be very used to working out your arms. Now you want to say, well, I want really strong legs and I want to integrate having a, a, a whole uh, integrated strong body with all of my muscles in my body being strong. So now you're focused on your heart. I'm going to really strengthen that heart space. So I more naturally live aligned to my heart space. And we think that's a wonderful thing. We think it's very powerful. But don't judge yourself when you find yourself in those moments where you're more in your mind than in your heart. We hear so much that we are love, and I think we do know that. But I'd love to hear how we actualize that knowledge, how we transcend shame and really move into actualizing what rings true but can feel far. Bring yourself into the now moment. We say stop. Take three breaths. If it feels good to close your eyes, stop. Close your eyes. Take three deep breaths. Go from your head into your heart. What does love feel like? We're asking for your feedback. What does love feel, feel like? I just feels like being exactly where you are. Yeah. You answered your own question. You focused yourself through your awareness of wanting to experience love. You focused yourself into a state of love. And it is who you are. So it's about knowing that this is available to you in every moment, no matter what is going on. However... Most people do not start thinking, oh, I want to focus myself into a state of love until they're in suffering or chaos or overwhelm or stress or depression. Do it when it's easy. As you're driving your car and you're feeling good and it's a beautiful day, take some deep breaths and focus your awareness from your head into your heart. What does love feel like? feels expansive, feels light, feels like presence, feels like who I really am. And you can take the word peace or well-being or abundance, freedom. Go into your heart. What does abundance feel like? What does freedom feel like? If you do this when it's easy, you will probably notice that you're living from such a state of presence and consciousness, so in the now moment, satiated, full, filled up with all of you, that shame just isn't part of your experience anymore. Guilt just isn't there anymore. You've elevated yourself to a place where those aren't things that are part of your experience anymore. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Really good. Uh, the last question that I want to ask is there just seems like there's so much going on in the world right now. 
that seems chaotic, seems like a lot of turmoil. Um, are we going to make it through this? Without any question or doubt. Of course, you have your own free will, but you've reached a tipping point of consciousness on the planet. You have more consciousness on your planet than ever before. You have more love on your planet than ever before. You have more well-being on your planet than ever before. You have more peace and harmony on your planet than ever before. You really do. What you focus on and the meaning you give it is what's creating your reality. What you focus on is what you're contributing to, what you're voting for more of. You don't get what you want or you think you need. You get more of what you are. If you are in a state of peace and joy and love, you will start to notice that there's peace and joy, more peace and joy and love in your life. If you focus on all the chaos and the disharmony in the world and you tune yourself into, for lack of better words, those channels, you will find that there's always chaos, disharmony, destruction, War, struggle, suffering, because you're tuned into that channel, that that's what, that's what they're telling you. That's what they're showing you. When you understand that you can observe the journey through consciousness and you can allow each being to have their own journey. That everything is potential and possibility and you get to choose. You will always cause your own suffering when you think you know what another soul's journey should be and when and how. This is a journey. This is a journey to awakening and realization. Each being has their own journey. Each being will awaken in their own time and will come into realization in their own time. We love you so much. Their journey is not your business. Your focus is on your journey. And do you positively contribute to raising the consciousness and the vibration and aligning to pure love such that it makes it easier and more harmonious for those who are choosing? Absolutely. You matter. Your life matters. Your level of consciousness matters. You expanding the possibilities and the potential of more joy, more love, more freedom, more happiness, more prosperity. It matters. But you don't get there by getting everyone else to do it your way or the way you think you should. You are, let's put it this way, you are never going to rid the third dimension of fear and lack and limitation. You will elevate yourself into the fifth dimension of pure love and live in your own experience of heaven on earth. You are not here to rid the third dimension of that which you are displeased about in that dimension of consciousness. That's not how this will ever get to the world that you envision or the dream of a fully awakened world that you have in your heart. You understand? Yes. Very good. Do you have any more questions for us? It feels complete. <laughs> very good. We have enjoyed this conversation with you so very much. We are always with you. We are always available to you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And with that, we are complete. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that vibration of their love when they say, I love you. Because like, you really feel it. It's like, oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thank you. Yes. We just love to thank you so much for this interview. We'd love to just uh just close with how can our followers get in touch with you and find out about all the amazing things you're doing? Yeah, Sarahlandon.com. There's lots of free resources there. We have an entire tab that's free resources that includes channeled messages and current um 
messages that we upload um, monthly there under free resources. There's a lot of information there. I encourage people to just go through it. And if a title or an image pops out to you, start there. Um, we encourage people to start with the 15 Success Principles of Self-Realization, which is a course that you can take, which talks about the council's core teachings and how to integrate them in your life. There's lots of different channeled courses. If you're looking um, for something in particular, like around abundance, there's a course called There's Only Love. Um, there is an, so many incredible courses on worthiness. Um, Welcome to Paradise is probably one of our our very popular courses, embody your highest potential, whatever it is, just start with something that you feel called to. Um, we also have our master's class advanced program and MP3 program, as well as you can find our books on Amazon or whatever your favorite um, book platform is, um, Kindle, audiobook. Um, and then we have a YouTube channel as well. We put lots of great free content up there. Um just allow yourself to be guided wherever you feel called or drawn, you know, start there. It is, as the council says, a, a journey. So have fun with it. Um, we have some incredible channeled meditations and activations from the council that I think really help bring people into that state. But as they said, the words are important, but the words are really entertaining your mind such that you will allow yourself into the vibration or to receive the activation or the frequency of their messages. So just allow yourself to receive. Well, thank you so much for coming on with us. We probably have a hundred more questions, so hopefully we can do this again <laughs> yeah. sometime. But, yeah, absolutely. So. Thank you so much for having me. I love what you guys are doing in the world. Um, as I, you know, the council shared, and I think I said earlier, it's just, you know, that, that going from your head into your heart is really, I think the pathway into your power, into the now present moment, into that place of stillness where you really access acceleration, realization, true creation, which is a whole nother conversation. Um, but it's amazing what you guys are doing. So thank you for, for being you and for all the consciousness and love and light that you bring to the planet. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Go check out Sarah's website and we'll see y'all again soon. Sending love to everybody. Bye. Our Coherence family, we are incredibly excited to share with you that this event is the lead up event to HeartMath's Global Coherence uh, Initiative, which will be taking place in California May 16th to 19th. We'll be speaking at that event alongside Jack Canfield, Greg Braden, Lynn McTaggart, and many other. Uh, phenomenal guests. You can attend in person. It's going to be an amazing retreat experience. You can also attend virtually. Yeah. And so the real cool part about it is Leah and I will be uh, guiding a meditation. And in that meditation, um, Roland McCready and other scientists are going to be measuring the impact it has on the field of the earth using random number generators that are all around the world. Yeah. So we're going to be Guiding a meditation where thousands of people send love and compassion and we're going to measure the effects. So it's going to be pretty cool. We really hope you will bring your energy, your loving energy to join us to see if we actually can influence the field of the earth. So yeah. we love you all. <laughs>